Welcome to the latest edition of the Hudson County Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Haig, and once again, just as a reminder that the Hudson County Sports Podcast is brought to you by Stan's Sports Center, located at 528 Washington Street in Hoboken. Stan's is one of the greatest uh, sporting goods stores in Hudson County, and is proud to be our main sponsor. And with me today is a, a very, very special guest. Is probably, arguably, the best baseball player to ever come out of Jersey City. Um, he went from St. Anthony High School, where he had a very good career. He then he, his career got better and better as he moved along the uh, along the ranks. He went from St. Anthony, where he had a good career. He then went to Seton Hall University, where he had an even better career. Got drafted by the Red Sox and had an even better career as a professional baseball player. Although it took him a little while to get to the major leagues, but still, he spent ten years with the Red Sox, one year with the Mets. And it's none other than John Valentin. John, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me, Jim. Now, glad to have you, John. No question. So, all right. You know, I, and I said to you before the, we, we started taping that, you know, you look at the, somebody's back of the baseball card. And today, I mean, I've known you for, God, you've got to be 30, 35 years. I, I looked at the back of the baseball card today, and it says, Born, Mineola, Long Island. I never knew that. And how did that, how did that all come about? You, you, were your parents from Long Island? Well, <laughs> my dad, you know, he was uh, originally a truck driver. He was a truck driver for about 20 years. And then he moved to Long Island, and he was a How old were you when you moved to Jersey City, John? So you were living in Jersey City. Your family was living in Jersey City, and you and you were born in Mineola Hospital because your mother felt comfortable there. Well, yeah, she wanted to go to the same doctor. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. That's that's a, that's a, that's a great story in itself. So, all right. So you, <laughs> all right. So you grew up downtown Jersey City, right? I grew up downtown Jersey City. Yeah. Okay. And what was it like growing up, uh, sports-wise, growing up in downtown? What street did you live on, by the way? I live uh, closer to uh, the Holland Tunnel, uh, 16th Street. Oh, wow. It's, uh, it, it's really close to almost Hoboken. Going to Hoboken. Beautiful. Danny will be very happy to know, to know that, that you're, you're giving a great play. So anyway, all right, so um, what was it like growing up in that area? And uh, and did you play all three sports growing up? Did you play football, baseball, basketball? I did not play football. Um, I grew up in uh, you know, downtown Jersey City, and I played baseball and football near Hamilton. Right. That's right. You went to St. Michael's High School for two years, right? I did. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, I went to their grammar school. I went to St. Michael's grammar school as well as uh, the high school. I went to Hamilton Middle School. Uh, and then I went to Hamilton High School. And then I went to Hamilton 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 School. And then I went to now, before you went to St. Michael's High School, you got a little bit of uh, a recognition playing Little League Baseball for downtown Little League, correct? That is correct. That's where, um, you know, it all started for me. So, you know, I had to play baseball for a And they dominated the District 7 tournament every year downtown Little League. Dominated that tournament, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, we obviously were pretty good. There were a lot of 
Okay, so, so did that give you your first taste of success was playing Little League Baseball? And, and did you realize at that time, okay, I could be pretty good at this? All right, so how disappointed were you after your first two years at, uh, at uh, St. Michael's and St. Michael's closed? How disappointed were you that the school closed? I mean, obviously, you wanted to stay there forever, no? All right, so who was the baseball coach and who was the basketball coach at St. Michael's back then? Was the basketball coach Jerry Hurley? Uh, correct. Yeah. Jerry Hurley was uh, the basketball, basketball coach and Tommy Gentile. Oh, Tommy Gentile was the baseball coach? Oh, that was he was my man. Tommy was a great man. Great man. Yeah, he was a good guy. And, of course, when he passed away, God bless him. Yep. Oh really? He can, oh so you learned from from one of the legends. He was a great great baseball man. He knew you know he and he he, he coached at uh, at Hudson Catholic for many many years, and uh, he ended up becoming the principal of St. Al's High School uh, on Westside Avenue. So he had a great great educational career, and was a good friend of mine. And it's uh, it's a shame we lost him. There's no question. Yeah. So. Okay. Did he know? Did you? Did, did Tommy Gentile know right away that you were a shortstop? Did he know? Um, you know, uh, you know, I don't really know. Um, obviously, they try to put the best athletes themselves in the position where you know he can make plays. Uh, but you know, I mean, you know, you're you're basically uh, you're put in a group of, of uh, athletes and they hit ground balls. Right. And was that something you always did well, John? Were you always a good fielder? That, that is true. All right. So um, so you went to St. Anthony, and the, the coach there was Mike Hogan. And what was it like to play for Hogan? Okay. 
Now, the thing that gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, John, but doesn't get lost in the shuffle in my, in my eyes, because I remember you, but uh, you were a very, very good basketball player. Can we talk a little bit about that? Okay. So, uh, being able to be able to, to play a point guard position is uh, a per, you know a person that has to run the offense, a person that has to be a leader, a person that has to play good defense. Uh, because you're probably playing against you know another point guard and a person who's running uh, the offense from the other end. So you know basketball really really played a really big part of my defense. Wow, okay. So um, you, you get then you go to St. Anthony's and you get to play for Coach Hurley and what was that like? Well, Coach Hurley is uh, like Bobby Knight of high school. Right. Uh, a fantastic coach, um, a coach that um, got everything out of all of his players. Another disciplinarian, a person who um, you know obviously coached the right way. He's uh, obviously very oriented when he you know, talks about offense and defense and, and being able to know where you're supposed to be at every specific point on the floor, whatever position you played, whether it was point guard or shooting guard or if you were a forward or a center, you had a responsibility. I learned that very, very well at St. Anthony's and you know, um, you know, St. Anthony's, St. Anthony's has such a, a great history of basketball players and what a program um, that I was able to go into um, to enhance my basketball skills, even though I wasn't playing every day. Um, I wasn't playing as a starter. I mean, and we were so good. We had David Rivers who went to Notre Dame um, to play. I had to cover him every day. That, that couldn't have been easy. <laughs> no, no. Easy. no, okay. But you, that, that, that enhanced my, you know, obviously playing for an organization, a basketball program like St. Anthony's is, uh, was an honor to be a part of and very, very difficult and uh, it challenged my skills. So it basically made me um, quite a bit, uh, you know, pretty good basketball player to a point where when I did walk on to a team call, P.J. Carlissimo wanted me to play basketball. Wow. Okay. I see. Now I never, you know what? Ever since I've been doing this podcast, I learned something new every day, and that's something I, I never knew the PJ asked you to play basketball. So, but talk about. Well, why I didn't want to play, play basketball. And I, I just felt that, you know, I wasn't going to be a starter. I wasn't going to be a point guard. I wasn't going to be a point The final four? Yeah, wow. Yeah. I, I could have been, been on that team. And you could have posted up Pookie Wigginson easily. I would get the ball to you at the block against Pookie. There's no question, see? All right, but... Yeah, all right, but, but how, about the, how about the team that you played on at St. Anthony's? Had basically... You won the county championship, and you basically had seven guards. There was no forwards on that team, and the biggest guy, I believe, was 6'2". And how how great how wild was it to play on that team when you know David Rivers obviously was the star 
Darren Rice was a very, very good player on that team, too. I think Mark Harris was also on that team. God rest his soul, right? Was he on that team, too? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so you had, you know, um, but... There was no, there was nobody on that team. It was over seven, six, one, six, two, and you ended up winning the county championship. That's how much, you know, like there must have been a huge sense of pride being uh, a team of guards, and yet you still won the county. Well, when, when you have guys that are very athletic and very able to ball, you can win the county championship very quickly and find the only guy. So, you know, when you have a guy that's driving uh, the lane. And and best thing you could do too was that back then was just get the ball to David and then get the hell out of the way and that was probably the best offense of all. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Did you know he was that, that good? He was that he was clearly that good. There's no question. So, all right. So now, uh, how, now you were not um, a scholarship athlete when you first went to Seton Hall, were you? You were you had a walk on, correct? Yeah. Um, I uh, I can defend probably with um, pretty much anybody. I, I can catch the baseball. So yep. Um, you know, Mike Hogan uh, really thought that I could play at a school. He didn't know um, that if I could play to as you want. Um, but my brother wanted to go to Seton Hall, and um, he wanted to go to Seton Hall, and he was an athlete and did play. But um, for some reason, you know, he didn't play um, at the level that I kind of played in the sense. He's still a good athlete, still played well, um, but he, he didn't want to play at any college uh, sport. He wanted to go to school, uh, a good school. So he chose Seton Hall, and Seton Hall has a great, or had a great baseball program, still has a good, very good baseball program. Yep. Turned out, you turned out to be bigger than Vigia, <laughs> right? No, you turned out to be bigger than Craig Vigia. As it turned out, well, you, yeah. Well, it turned out that I was taller. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I well, I'm. You know, I know he's a Hall of Famer, but I'm just saying. As it turned out, they they gave him a scholarship, but you turned out to be bigger. You had a bigger structure, bigger. You you were height uh, taller and. Uh, and bigger. So, I mean, and they didn't give you a scholarship. That's wild. So. Right. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Right.
Uh, as you know, Seton Hall is a Catholic university. Um, I've been to Catholic high school, Catholic grammar school, uh, raised the Catholic. Um, I wanted to go to Seton Hall. Um, I had a chance to go to St. Peter's um, in Jersey City, but I didn't feel that they had a good program at the time. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to be challenged. So basically, I said I'm going to walk on and I'm going to let the cards uh, lay where they fall, you know, fall where they lay. Right. Uh, uh, let the chips fall where they, they fall. Right. And, um, basically, basically, I went in there and, and they got the CD shield every day. They really felt that um, I could play at a high level. And okay. They were very, very surprised you know, with, with the way I was playing. And in the fall, we had a lot of scrimmages. We uh, took a lot of ground balls. Uh, Ed Blankmeyer really saw the fact that I could, I could field probably better than anyone they had at the time. Easily. And that's, uh, yeah. and that's how I became the shortstop. Um, uh, as a freshman, I made the the, the, the varsity the varsity team. The actually where um, the shortstop that they had at the time was a senior captain named Joe Arvini. He uh, went into the DH, um, and I was a shortstop at, at you know, my freshman year. So okay. It was a great challenge. It was a great challenge for me playing against uh, athletes that were, you know, considered better than me, and uh, it only made me grow. Every, you know, every, every, every team that I went to, whether it was uh, high school basketball or or uh, every team that I was on, I was always challenged by good athletes. And I always rose to the challenge. Okay. The challenge All right, and now what... It was just a lot of fun. Well, what was it like to play for a legendary coach like Mike Shepard? Well, uh, another disciplinarian. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But um, he was a screamer, you know, a person that uh, accept, you know, he didn't accept anything but excellence. So, you know, we, we practiced really, really hard. Uh, we practiced every day. Uh, we never took any days off. Uh, he always wanted to be ready to play in Miami in the spring. Um, that's the kind, you know, we always played a tough schedule. Uh, that's the kind of man he was. When did the hitting kick in, Johnny, uh, that uh, you then all of a sudden started to become, uh, you know, a better than 300 hitter uh, on, the on the collegiate level? I mean, everybody knew you could catch the ball, but it was the, the hitting that turned out to be a big surprise to everybody that was involved. And when did, when did, when, what, when did that kick in? Was it sophomore year, junior year? Well, I, I hit 327 as a freshman. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Oh. 
college. Uh, I got on the weight program, uh, being at City Hall University and playing for the City Hall Pirates. You know, um, the expectations to play well and to you know, get the right nutrition and lifting weights uh, did, a, did a, a hell of a made a hell of a difference in my career. And uh, that's what got me drafted. I was able to hit better. Um, and, and, and basically, as I got stronger, I became an offensive player. Okay. And, uh, you know, I was always a defensive player, but you know, as I got stronger, I was a, 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 a much better hitter. Okay. Did it all? Uh, and when you were at Seen Hall, that was a powerhouse team. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you were in the same infield. With Mo Vaughn, uh, well, Biggio was the catcher. He didn't play in the infield, right? Mo Vaughn, Marquise, Marquise Robinson, you were the shortstop, and I don't know who the third baseman was, but you were all part of the same in, the same infield, and that was a dominant, dominant uh, program. That, am I right that you played with, with Vaughn and Biggio on the same team? No, no question. No question. My sophomore year, we went 45 and 10. Wow. Okay. So, and, and Billy Spires, who played at Clemson, uh, he was a shortstop as well. Uh, so, you know, it, you know, we always played against the competition, and but that year in 87, uh, we were 45 and 10, and we got a lot of recognition. To be honest with you, that's how I got noticed, uh, because they came out to see uh, Marquis Robinson, they came out to see Craig Vigio. Uh, Obron was a freshman, I was a sophomore, and, uh, you know, I had the Boston scout come up to me and say, you know, you could probably play the big defensives right now, you just need to get stronger. And, you know, I took, I took, when, when someone told me something, um, I basically took it to heart, and uh, I developed a, to try to get stronger. You know, I gained more weight. Uh, try to hit the weights, um, and you know, came my junior year, um, I was uh, picked by that same scout who said that I could play the big leagues. So, but you got. Uh, I, I remember uh, watching. I remember watching that draft. That was the 1988 88 draft, right? I think, right? 1988. Yeah. Okay, and watching that draft uh, as it was going along, the uh, I, I think on the internet, I would think I was watching it, and all of a sudden, boom, your name came up in the fifth round, and I was like stunned, and I said, I had to call my sports editor to dispatch, I said, Johnny Valentin just got drafted in the fifth round, we weren't expecting that, and then I remember trying to track your agent down, and, and, and you know, trying to get to you as quick as possible, so, so you could talk, uh, because I knew... Fifth round, you were going to sign. There's no question about that, right? Well, you know, I, you know, I was surprised uh, as well. And, um, I didn't know where I was going to go. Um, I did know that I was going to get drafted, uh, but I didn't know how high. You know, and um, you know, it would have been nice to be a, a second or third round, but you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take the fifth round. Yeah, no question, especially when nobody expected it. That was, you know, you were you were not projected to go that high. So and especially one and then once you got drafted that high, you knew you were, you were going to sign. Now you had an, you had a chance to go back, right? You had another year. You got drafted as a junior, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, all right. But 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 you knew after getting drafted you were going to sign. There's no question, right? Yeah, there was no question. Okay. All right. So then now you get and and then this is the amazing thing about your minor league career is that the majority of it was spent, and you played eight years of minor league baseball, but the majority of it was spent. No, I didn't, I didn't play eight years. I only played three and a half years. Oh, okay. I, I, according, to, according to baseball reference uh, that I'm looking at right now, it says minor leagues, eight seasons. Oh, is that like, does that include uh, injury, uh, injury seasons when you're ready in the big leagues? Oh, that's probably what was the case, too. All right, I take it back. All right, so... Uh, I, no, I only played three and a half years, so whatever information you got there is wrong or someone 
Yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, it's online, and it says you know major league eleven seasons, minors eight seasons. But I think John, what that includes is every time that you went to the minors as like say a rehab uh, assignment. I think that I think that's what they included that too as well. So all right, and and that's uh, my apologies. All right, but you got sent to Elmira, New York, which was not that far away. And how much did it help you? That your first minor league experience was only three hours away, and if you, you know, like you, your friends and family could come up and see you and say hello. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's always great to have fans uh, and friends um, and family come see you play. You know, that comfort uh, level of always seeing someone that you care about uh, to come see you play is always great, as well as friends. I've had friends come up and see plays that I was fun. Um, so, you know, it, the transition, um, my first year from aluminum to wood was something that was a little difficult for okay. me. But, you know, I adjusted and uh, you know, started to play well as the years went on. And without question, you just kept getting better and better uh, in, in, in pro baseball. It was incredible. But then... Uh, you went to Lynchburg in the Carolina League, which must have been a lot of fun. That must have been a good, uh, fun league to play in, the Carolina League, right? Yeah, it's a famous, it's a famous, um, the famous league, um, Lynchburg used to be, uh, Lynchburg Athletic Club, and it was a great league. Right. And that's where, that's where, you know, Doc Gooden. Doc Gooden and Lenny Dykstra on that, made that team that won 120 games one year. Well, we will be back uh, with more about with John Valentin and his pro career as he's going to go into Double A uh, in one second. But first, we have this uh, commercial message from Stan Sports Center. Stan Sports Center is your local full service sporting goods vendor and authorized team dealer. They offer quality products and dozens of brands to outfit your team top to bottom. Stan has been proudly supporting the local community since 1946 and is your one-stop shop for uniforms, equipment, online team stores, and much more. Locations in, so in Hoboken and Saddlebrook, and servicing the entire Tri-State area. Visit them on the web at StansSportsCTR.com. That's StansSportsCTR.com. And check them out on social media for their latest creations. That's Stan Sports Center, located at 528 Washington Street in Hoboken, the telephone number there is 201-798-4466. And if you mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast at Stands to Danny and Lou and Todd and my good friends down at Stands, if you mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast, you're going to get 10% off on anything retail that's in the store. So that's not a bad bargain. Thanks to, uh, to Stands for being the sponsor. And I know they're going to be real, real happy to know that John Valentin is a guest tonight. So. All right, John, we're going to continue, and you said that you were in, in 1990, you were in New Britain, Connecticut, so that's fairly close, too, but uh, was that a, that was a tough transformation for you, playing in the Eastern League? Well, you know, uh, obviously, uh, if you get to double A, um, you are the Eastern League champion, and that's something that Brutal. Yeah. 
You're breaking up a little, John. Go ahead. In 91, you got the Triple A in, in Portucket, and Hobson was the manager there, too? Uh, yes, he was. He okay. He was uh, the Triple A manager, and then he got the big league job. Yeah. Well, and, and it also helped that you hit the ball really well uh, right away as a rookie. You, uh, you hit 276, five homers and 25 RBIs in probably 58 games. That's, uh, and that, incredibly, 276 was your highest batting average in your professional career. And where did it take place? In the major leagues. So, that's, I mean, that's, that's uh, inc incredible statistics. So, did, did that give you confidence fully well, knowing fully well you could be a hitter on a big league level? Yep, your first well, your first full season in uh, in the big leagues. First full one was 1993. Uh, you hit 278 with 11 homers and 66 RBIs and 40 doubles in 144 games. So I guess at that point you were cemented. You were a big leaguer, and not only just a big leaguer, but you were on your way to stardom. And did that give you a lot of confidence? No, putting up those numbers that year. Yeah. And then in 1995, you had your best year in the big leagues. Uh, you won the Silver Slugger Award um, as the top-hitting shortstop in the American League. 
Uh, you hit 27 homers, 102 RBIs. You hit 298, 37 doubles, 155 hits, 108 runs scored. And you finished ninth in the American League in the most valuable player uh, voting. What was what was that like to have that all explode like that? You went from being a That silver slug of bat somewhere, somewhere in your house. Um, I'm actually right in my office. I'm doing this podcast with you, and it's my life. Beautiful. See, all right. Well, I'm glad it's I'm glad it's still around. A lot of people, you know, they they get awards and they don't know what they do with it. It's it's, it's, a, it's a shame. So, all right. That that year started a, a run of five straight years where you had double figures in homers every single year. You drove in at least seventy five runs. And you hit with only one year that you slumped a little bit, but you hit 290 every single one of those five years too as well. Right? So then at that point, you're, you're well established as a major, major leaguer, correct? You felt really good about that, about that and playing for the Red Sox? Did you feel good about being a Red Sox? Yeah. Championships those years too as well. I mean, you were right there. Um, uh, you, you played in the NL, the ALCS against the Yankees, and in the division series. And it just, it's just, it's a shame that the, it, you just couldn't get over the top. But you had, you had some great teams, you know. And uh, that must have been, you know, it must have been an exciting time for you to be playing, um, you know, for the Red Sox in those battles that they used to have every single year with the Yankees. Oh. Um, as, as you can say, um, they should have won more World Series than the ones that they, they got. Right. Um, and in my and in my mind, if if Albert Bell's not a Hall of Famer, I don't know what he is. That 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 that, that man could hit the ball. He could he, he could rake. There's no question. And he's just. Okay, so then, uh, then it, it was then now the year 2000. I think that's when you first got hurt. And can you tell a little bit about what what was the injury that that, that plagued you in 2000? 
Well, you know, in, in 99 and 98, I started to get tendonitis in my left knee. Okay. And, um, you know, it was and you played through it? You, you played? I played through it. Wow, okay. I played, yeah, I played through it. Um, I, I took some cortisone shots to try to get me through it. Um, but unfortunately, you know, you can't, you know, you can't put cortisone in a small area in your knee, which made my tendon brittle. Um, and unfortunately, I flew out um, in 2000. And uh, yeah, I, I also slumped. Because I was hurt. You know, okay. It's just an unfortunate time. And, um, you know, I played through pain. I, I played through pain. And, and you know, I was a pretty guy. I didn't want to come out of the line. And uh, I wanted to play well. So. All right. And yeah, I, I, I could see in those years, you know, 2000, you only played 10 games. 2001, you only played 20 games. Uh, was was there any thought at all at that point, John, that you wanted did you, that you were going to retire, or did you say to yourself, "No, you still had it in you"? No, I, I, I tried. I, 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 I tried. 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 I Okay. So um, I could not I could not play at the high level that I wanted to play at anymore. Um, so I decided to to retire. Yeah. Okay, but you had one last year where you came home, and I mean you were a bench player for the Mets, but you were pretty successful. And what was that like to be able to play in New York City for one year? <laughs> That's great. You just couldn't do it, huh? Yeah, I could, I could not put on the pin stripes like, uh, you know, Roger did and Wayne did and Johnny Bates did and Ellsbury did. Right. Uh, I, just, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. And what, who was your favorite team growing up? Were you a Met fan? Right. Um, uh, because they played, you know, obviously they played well with, with all the championships. You can understand that, uh, you know, they did things right. Um, you know, my family was the best family, and that's the reason why I chose them. Okay. So, um, so you got one year in with the Mets, and then what happened after that year? Did you just want to retire, or did you get, did, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you get an opportunity to become a coach? Oh, the Mets didn't offer you. The Mets didn't offer you another contract in two thousand three. No. Okay. have a good year with the Mets stuff, no? so, but he, he was he was good with Arizona, but he wasn't good with the, he wasn't good with the Mets. So, all right, so. Good. 
that, that's okay, John. He didn't know. He didn't know any, a lot of the plays that he managed. So he, you know, he had a, he had a tough time all the way around. So, as was proven in the movie Moneyball. So um, anyway, so at that point, after that, uh, you said the Red Sox. I mean, the Orioles. You, you had a chance there, or you had a, ch a chance anywhere else, and that's it. You just decided to, to hang it up. seasons in the major leagues, 124 homers, 558 RBIs, he hit 270, 279 for a career, 281 doubles. Yeah, you had nothing to be ashamed of at all. That's a, that's a hell of a career. So, um, you, you know, so when you were at a, walked away from it, you probably said, yeah, I'm pretty fortunate. I had a, I had a pretty good career. I was pretty happy with it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. So then, what did what did, when, when did coaching come into the uh, into the picture? Did you do that right away, or did you come home and you know just start a regular life? Um, I took a, I took a couple of years off, um, and uh, so I finished playing in 2002. I tried to play with the Orioles in three. Um, I also tried to play. Uh, I went to spring training for the Astros. 2004, but I just could not get help. I just was not the same player. Yep. So I, I basically retired in 04. And um, and am I am I wrong in saying that didn't the Long Island Ducks of the of the Amer Atlantic League try to sign you too, and you didn't want any part of that? Um, I had I, I they may they may have called. Okay. Yeah, okay. Unless your name is Ricky Henderson. Yeah, yeah. To each their own, right? That's the question. All right, so, so, so you were away from baseball a couple seasons, and then uh, how did coaching come into play, and who was the, your first organization that, that offered you a job coaching? Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, that was my first uh, taste of coaching. Um, I felt like I, I did be shitting in a sense, and um, it, it's uh, something that I'm very glad to be feeling as well. Um, but uh, the double A hitting coach was available, and I wanted to coach. Um, I wanted to see if I could pass, you know, my knowledge along to. Uh, Okay, and how many years did you stay with the Mets as a, as a minor league coach? I um, I spent one year with the Mets, um, and then I I got a management position with the Dodgers. Yeah, that's right. In inland, in inland empire, right? That's correct. Yeah, that, was, that must have been a gorgeous ballpark, or or was it? Am I am I wrong? I mean, that's a gorgeous part of the country. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you were in the big leagues for three years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, and who was the manager then? Mattingly? Mattingly. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, that must have been, hey, you know what? If you can't learn from hitting instructors like John Valentin, Mark McGuire, and Don Mattingly, then you never can learn. I mean, that's that's a pretty good crew right there, you know? Yeah, we had a great coaching staff. Yeah. That's correct. That great, that great staff that they had. Yep. You know, the and, and Harvey, Harvey and Yeah, they, they yeah, that was a that was a great run by the Mets. So, all right. So then you so you stayed in the Dodgers organization till how long? Uh, ten seasons. Wow. Okay. What made you walk away? Did you just just had enough of the travel, enough of uh, enough of baseball life? Okay. Twenty some odd years. I'd say twenty. Well, if you include in college, it's twenty twenty six years or so. So that's a, that's a pretty good career. That's a, that's that's a good stint. So. I was pretty happy with it. You okay. Know, I, I enjoyed coaching and uh, obviously playing at the high level. Fantastic. All right. So then you you came back home, and then what did you start to do? And you, if you want to, let's explain a little bit. What are you What are you doing now for a living? And um, and what are you doing also in terms of working with young kids down in the Morganville area? Well, I, I really um, I'm not really doing anything per se. Okay. Financial Network is uh, trying to develop a sports division. Uh, they are a financial services firm that uh, does uh, you know, financial planning for for individuals, uh, families, businesses, uh, so on and so forth. And they, they are trying to develop a sports division. So I am part of their organization and uh, somewhat, and I'm working for them. To, uh, but it's got to be really difficult in the pandemic, though, right? Uh, well, it's obviously, you know, because of the pandemic, there aren't any opportunities to go out there and try to uh, transition athletes into uh, financial advisors. Um, right. But, uh, you know, I, it's, uh, it's something that, you know, is going to happen, and uh, we're always looking for athletes who are Transitioning into the corporate world, and uh, you know, um, they they hired me at the pace of their sports division. Beautiful. Okay. And then, what's the uh, what's the organization that you're doing some coaching with? Oh, um, I, I I do some. You know, I, I do still teach uh, occasionally at the dugout Morganville, which is uh, a nice little facility. Um, and uh, they uh, they have batting cages. I go in there and I, uh, in order to uh, fill my my void when it comes to teaching, um, I end up you know jumping in the cage with kids and trying to teach them. Okay. Um, and and that's got to be a lot of fun, though, right? Oh, it's fantastic when you get eight and nine year olds and uh, you know high school kids, college kids, uh, and even some minor leagues. There, uh, you can pass along some advice to, to any any person that's trying to get to the next level. Is something that uh, is worthwhile. So I enjoy it, and uh, you know anybody that I can help uh, from a baseball standpoint, and uh, you know it's fun to do. Yeah. All right, and where uh, and where do you call home now? What town? I live in Homedale, New Jersey. Homedale, okay. Right, uh, right in the uh, in the throes of the Garden State Arts Center, right? I don't uh, live too far away. Okay, all right. And uh, married? Any children? I am married. Um, twenty nine years. You married twenty nine years? What'd you get married when you were four? Uh, I got married. Uh, my husband. Uh, I got married. Uh, my AAA season, but you know, I. Uh, with uh, my girlfriend for a long time. Mm. And, uh, 
God bless. Uh, 29 years. I have two children. I have two children. Um, 26 and 25. And uh, they're both working. They're both working. So you know a lot about the parallel bars and the ring now from watching them, right? That's correct. Okay, yeah. Could you could you be an expert on that and talk about it on television? I'd I'd, I'd love to see. I'd love to see Jen and with you know when uh, go. Let's go to the uh, you know to the vault and there's John Ballantin is going to give a little expertise on the on the vault. Yeah. So, no, but uh, what are you what are your daughter's names? Oh, okay. And your wife's name? Uh, Marie. Marie. Well, so this is again a nice family. You're still living in New Jersey, and uh, um, you got to, John, you got to feel pretty fortunate that, that with the uh, career that you were able to have and mold all through uh, all through sports. And without sports, you wouldn't have uh, what you have today. And that's got to be a, a pretty rewarding feeling, no? question and like I said um, you're you know it's I don't even know if it's an argument I think you're the best baseball player to ever come out of Jersey City so that's uh, and I, I know there's a guy in Texas right now that's probably going to argue with, with that one a little bit but I disagree see you know there's a lot different between just, just throwing the ball real hard and um, and and hitting it and playing but although he thinks he can hit really well too so then that's our that's our mutual friend, Mr. Willie Banks, who thinks that he, maybe he's the best player of all time. But I, I think uh, I think we'll, we'll 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 put the vote in for you, considering how well you did in big leagues. So, John, thank you so very very much for this uh, trip down memory lane. I appreciate it. I'm glad we finally got a chance to do it. And uh, please, let's keep in touch. And uh, and hopefully, I could see it somewhere down the road in a non-pandemic world. So, thanks so very much for sharing your time with me. No problem. All right. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. We'll keep in touch. All right. Thank you so much. Take care and be safe. You too, buddy. Take care now. And and that was my special guest tonight was John Ballantin, uh, the former uh, Boston Red Sox star shortstop and Jersey City uh, Jersey City guy, and uh, he did get you know gave a great great. Uh, Great, great interview for for our um, for our podcast this week. Just as a reminder, once again, that Stan Sports Center is your local full service sporting goods vendor and authorized team dealer. They offer quality products and dozens of brands to outfit your team, top to bottom. Stan has been proudly supporting the local community since 1946 and is your one stop shop for uniforms, equipment, online team stores, and much more. Locations in no in Hoboken and Saddlebrook and servicing the entire tri-state area. Visit them on the web at StanssportsCTR.com. That's StanssportsCTR.com. And, and, and yeah, look at that. And, and, uh, and that will, uh, uh, check them out on social media for the latest creations. That stands a sports Center at 528 Washington Street in Hoboken. Telephone number is 201-798-4466. And uh, go down to stands, and they will uh, give you 10% off on anything retail in the store if you mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast. So go down and say hello to my friends, uh, Danny and Todd. And, uh, oh, boy, am I drawing a blank now. Uh, 
Oh God, please don't shoot me. All right, but 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 Danny and Todd and 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 the boys down at the stands is a great great place. And um, just mention Hudson County Sports Podcast and you get ten percent off. All right, thank you so very much for listening to Hudson County Sports Podcast. Once again, my special thanks to my executive producer Johnny Haig, my great nephew. Who let's keep in our prayers. He just learned that he tested positive for the coronavirus. So let's hopefully he, he recovers uh, soon and doesn't have any long term uh, uh, problems with the coronavirus. And I want everybody out there wear your mask, stay safe, please. We got to be able to get through this. You know, the vac- vaccines are out now. We're coming to the end of the road. So please wear your mask, stay safe, and do the right things. And uh, and hopefully we'll be back to normal by the summer. Thanks again for listening to the Hunter County Sports Podcast this week. I'm Jim Hay. Have a pleasant evening.